in our previous clip we looked at a PPF where we had constant returns in terms of the, the gains of production or constant opportunity costs. That assumed that resources were perfectly transferable between two alternatives. It's not, it's not likely that that's the case. For example, even in our little simple farmer example of wheat and wool, some resources are reasonably transferable, perhaps the farmers labour the land itself, but clearly uh, elements of capital, for example, the, the, the capital equipment, the machinery we would use to harvest wheat are not appropriate for the production of wool, shearing the sheep, etc, etc. In fact, in reality, what we need to do is actually bend or bow the curve so that it's actually got a distinct convex shape from the origin or it, it concave to the origin. Now, what we want to show here quite simply is that if we transfer resources such that we want to get a constant increase in, say, the production of, of, of wool, what we find is that opportunity cost is in fact increasing. So what we find is that our returns, if you like, so we're decreasing, we're decreasing, we're decreasing, but what we find is that our gains in terms of wheat are actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The idea of constant opportunity cost is unreal, and in fact what we find is that land, labour and capital, and to some extent technology and entrepreneurial ability, are not perfectly transferable between alternatives. Now there's a couple of things we need to remind ourselves of the, the usefulness of our little model. For example, what would you think if, we were, if I said to you that we we're operating at this level of production? inside the curve. Well, remember at the start of the last clip, we stated or we assumed that all of our resources were being used to their optimum, that they were being used efficiently. If we are not operating on the curve, on our frontier, then we're not achieving the production possibilities that are possible if in fact we're using all of our resources to their optimum. So, it, any point inside our curve, any point inside, is inefficient because there's unemployment. Any point on the curve, yes, excellent. We are using our resources efficiently. Now remember, of course, that, again, F for frontier. So are we able to produce at this level of production? No, we're not. Why? Because we're beyond our production capabilities. And that doesn't mean to say at some stage in the future, we can improve our stock of land, labour, capital, technology, etc. And in fact, our, our, our production possibilities grow. That's, that's a distinct possibility. But that's at some stage in the future, not the now. Not the now. Okay. Now, let's contemplate one more thing. Let's say we were being productively efficient and we're and we're operating on our curve at, say, point C. Why might, why might a farmer transfer resources away from this level of production in order to increase their level of wheat production, knowing that they're going to incur an opportunity cost? In other words, what I'm posing the question here is, how will society determine where on the curve we operate. Now we're starting to talk about a problem of allocative efficiency. We, how will we allocate our resources such that we achieve the levels of production in the goods and services that society most wants? Well, by and large, as George and I have discussed previously, in our capitalist market-based economy, there will be a role for prices to play here. So, for example, a simple little example here would be that 
if the farmer felt that there was going to be a rise in the price of the global price of wheat because of perhaps shortages in North America or Russia, then it would make good sense that in order to capitalise on a potentially higher return, that you transfer resources out of here, knowing full well there's an opportunity cost involved, but, but you are able to produce more at a high, and get a higher return because, and, and we're saying that resources will be guided. They're guided by the fluctuations in price. What we need to do is to have a closer look at how those prices are established in our market-based economy. And that's where we're going next time.